How We've are been you? On you? Sorry, I was trying to set up my you know, little situation here. You're <laughs> all good. You're all good. Guess of the you hour. For me on. Thank you for joining for agreeing to speak with me. I'm really excited to have you. Um, I know the fans are also excited to speak with you, hear you talk. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started because I know you have a very busy schedule today. Um, uh, thank you again, Jennifer, for uh, agreeing to speak with me. For everybody who's just joining, my name is Tia. I am the host and creator of Tia with Tia. And I will let you introduce yourself for those who may not know who you are. So just let us know who you are and what do you do. Hi, I'm Jennifer Freeman, and I am an actress. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know you do a lot more than that, but we're going we gonna to get into it. <laughs> All right, so uh, Jennifer, again, thank you. So um, I like to start all my interviews off with like little fun questions. Okay. Um, so I do want to know if you could live in any cartoon world, which world would you live in? Oh, if I could live in any cartoon world. I mean, wow, that's like my favorite cartoon. I'm trying to think. All I can think of right now is like the Jetsons. <laughs> that would be an interesting world to live or in. The Rugrats. Okay. Oh, the Rugrats. I, <laughs> that was my show. I would go with Phineas and Ferb. I think a summer with them would be great. Oh my gosh, yes. That would be <laughs> <nice>. <laughs> So um if you had to choose three foods that you would eat over and over for the rest of your life, what would those mm -hmm. three foods be? Brownies. Um, I love brownies. I love anything sweet, actually. That's like my weakness. Um, brownies, I love a good veggie lasagna. Ooh. Mm. And <laughs> I really love a good salad, to be honest. Like a really good just green salad with like a simple dressing. So that would be like the three things I would eat over and over again. Okay. So where are you originally from? So I'm from Long Beach, actually. I was born in Long Beach. Uh, I'm Long Beach, California. I moved to um, LA when I was a teenager, Burbank, and I have been here ever since. So I stayed pretty local. Okay. So what have you been doing during quarantine? Like, how has that experience been for you? What have I been doing during quarantine? Well, I, I filmed a couple of Christmas movies, um, which I'm very excited about. Um, and also, I've been um, doing virtual school <laughs> with my daughter. Okay. <laughs> which has been um, definitely very interesting. Uh, and just spending time, you know, finding new ways to spend time uh, creatively with her and you know make it as fun and enjoyable as i can so yeah so um being that you know seems like this is world of tiktok now and i know you have what 11 year old your daughter's 11 right yes oh my so, gosh <laughs> has she had that but yes we have been doing a lot of tiktoks like definitely i would have never done tiktoks probably before this <laughs> But that's something that she loves to do. So we, you know, she tried to teach me the dances. I don't know what's going on. And she gets really <laughs> frustrated and it's really funny. So I just kind of do my own thing, but we have fun. It's, that's it's fun. great. So I'm assuming spending time with your daughter has been probably the highlight of your quarantine experience. Yes. Getting more yes. time with her. Yeah, okay. I think, you know, I, I think, you know, we're all at home a lot more than we ever have been. Um, specifically us, we're, we were always on the go, always doing something, all, like even on the weekends, we had activities, sports, um, we're just very active. And so this really slowed us down, you know, to where we yes. had to find different, you know, things to be creative with and spending time and playing board games and, um, you know, just different things that are baking or cooking, different things that we had, you know, probably always wanted to do more of, but we were just so busy not home that we didn't do them. So this really gave us a chance to become closer, I feel like, um, through this process, time. And so it's been really, um, that's been a blessing. 
Okay. Um, so I do know that you've been branching out of your shell. You've been doing a lot more than just acting. Um, I did see you have a YouTube channel. I did subscribe. Um, oh, and you're doing a podcast as well and an author. So you're doing a lot. So tell us um, a little bit more about that. How is, how's all that going for you? Uh, it's going really well. I'm really excited about 2021. I feel like I'm ending 2020, even though it's been a very um, – crazy year to say the least um but I feel like I'm ending it on a really good note um and so I'm really excited about what 2021 has in store I feel like um I'm really I'm starting a podcast in the beginning of next year and I that's my purpose work I like to call it and so I'm excited about really um you know just exploring that and people getting to know that other side of me uh, and I'm going to be producing, I'm going to write another book. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm excited about, you know, just what's next and being really open to that. So, okay. Um, so I did take a few questions from the audience before you joined okay. and they, uh, a lot of them want to know, are you single? They want to know, is the beautiful <laughs> Jennifer single? <laughs> Oh my goodness. I, yes, I, I am single. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we, you had to tell us, um, like your ideal man or your deal breakers, can you kind of just give them a, just a little hint of the kind of man you would go for? You never know. Your, your Prince Trina might be watching. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> ah, um, well, I think that it would just be, you know, I'm really looking for, you know, a partner in life, you know, someone who's on the same journey of um, just wanting to grow in life together, someone who loves God, someone Absolutely. who, you know, is a person, of, a person of integrity and who holds themselves accountable, but also loves to have fun. I want to have fun in life. I don't want to be bored. So I feel like I'm a fun person. So I, I, you know, I, I feel like it's pretty simple, actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I did um, watch a few of your other interviews, and I did hear you talk about um, practicing celibacy. So wh what made you do that? And has that pretty much changed your dating life for the better? Or has it made it harder? Um, well, I, I went on the journey of celibacy because I, you know, I, I went on a self you know, just, I wanted to heal. So that really came from, I went through a really, you know, bad time in my life. And I realized I didn't really love myself. And I was really honest with that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to figure out why, you know, I had all of these issues. And so that really meant I didn't want to be distracted. I didn't want to date anyone. I didn't want to look at anyone. I just wanted to be with myself until I felt like I really loved myself and I didn't need to be with anyone or, you know, I, I felt like I was whole. Uh, okay. So, so that was, you know, I, I, I just made that decision and then it turned into, you know, just whatever time it turned into. So that's, um, that was really the motivation for that. Okay. So, um, I almost called you Claire for a second. <laughs> I can see, like, all the, the comments. I really, because I was kind of looking at the comments. I literally almost called you Claire. We're really definitely going to dive into your acting career. I do know that you started um, acting very young. Was it the age of nine? Yes. Nine? Okay. I, I was nine. So being that you started at such a young age, how, like, what, what made you want to act? You know, most nine-year-olds are playing with dolls and riding their bikes. How did you get the interest of saying, hey, you know, mom, I want to be in the industry? So can you tell us just a little bit how you got started with that? So I actually have a, a really crazy story. I was in a grocery store in Long Beach with my mom. And when I was nine, and this local manager came up to my mom and asked, did I want to act? Because she saw my personality and I was really talkative and my mom was ignoring me um, <laughs> in the grocery store. And so she asked me and my mom thought it was just like, you know, someone just saying whatever. She ended up taking me to an agency up in LA and I signed with an agency and I just loved, like I've always loved people and I love, um, 
I love people's stories. I just, I really, really love people. So, so, you know, going in a room and talking and, you know, like that was like my dream, you know, I was like <laughs> going in a room talking to people and that's still, you know, I, I love people and I love reading about people and telling people stories and making people happy and smile. So, um, I, when I was a kid, you know, my mom said, you can do acting, but that would be your hobby. So I didn't get to play any sports or okay. you know, really have like a social life at all, to be honest. That was like everything, but it was worth it. You know, it, it ended up, you know, paying off really big. Yeah, um, it worked out. It worked out for me, but, but it was honestly something that I, I really, really loved doing. So okay, yeah. so your um your daughter um Isabella she mm -hmm. is around um the age you were when you started. So is she interested at all in acting and following in your <laughs> footsteps? Um, uh, you know she says that she wants to act. I actually did a Christmas movie about two years ago called Throwback Holiday, and she actually she, I had two sets of kids and she wanted to play like my daughter and she was like mom you know do you think that they'll let me play your daughter you know in the movie and so the director Trey Haley he was like yeah of course if she wants to do it like let her do it so it was really cool we you know got to be on screen together and have that experience and that was her first experience acting um so she says she wants to do it but I don't really know if she like really wants to do it because she sees me do it or she like really wants to do it so um we'll see you know I think for me when I was nine I knew that I, mm -hmm. wanted to, I was very confident and so but I I also you know I want her to explore other things Same. You know, okay so, you know, if she wants to do it, I would totally support her. But I want her to try a number of things before she commits to something. Okay. That's, I mean, that's fair. You want her to definitely do something that she truly enjoys instead exactly. of just trying to make you happy. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we are going to jump into uh, talking about Claire briefly, you know, because okay. that's one of your most notable roles. Um I was a really huge My Wife and Kids fan. Um, so you did a great job in that. Thank you. Um, so there is no secret that Claire was originally played by Jazz um, in the first season. So can you just give us, just tell us how that call went when they called to let you know that you would be, you know, replacing her and stepping in as the role of Claire. Can you, if you can recall that, that first initial contact, let us know how that went. Well, I actually had, like, I I tested with another girl who I felt like looked like more like Tisha than I did at the time. And I actually got her autograph. I just felt like she was going to get it. And I just got her. I was like, oh, my gosh, she's going to be on this show. So when I got the call, I wasn't even, like, down the street yet. I was with my mom and my manager. And, like, I couldn't believe it because, you know, this was my dream. You know, I had you know, wanted to be on a TV show, I wanted to do movies, I wanted, you know, so this was like, you know, I was 15. Uh, so I was like, in disbelief, because I really believed that she was going to get it. And so um, I, um, you know, like, we, I think, coming in and, and replacing someone is hard, because the perception is you somehow decided that you wanted the role instead of the other person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work like that way. You just get a call and you go and audition and, and that's, that's, that's it. So um, I definitely had to deal with, you know, just, it was very interesting. Cause I was like, well, I just, you know, went and audition and this is, I now I'm here. And, and right. I, I didn't have any say so in anything, you know? Um, and, and funny that you say that because um, I always kind of imagined or wondered, uh, being that colorism is a very relevant topic still to this day, mm -hmm. um, did you fear that people would make this a dark skin versus light skin type of situation? Did you did you deal with that, you know, during the show? Because, you know, being that you were 15, you were still relatively right. young. Um, but did you have to deal with people making those types of comments and assumptions that you were chosen because you were light skinned and jazz is, um, you know, darker skinned? Both of you are very beautiful women. But did you have to deal with 
that type of backlash? I absolutely did. I didn't know that I was that I was going to have to deal with that. But um, there were like comments online that, you know, definitely mm -hmm. um, were not, you know, good. And I was really young. So I didn't really know how to exactly handle that. But my mom is brown skin. So, you know, I just, you know, I really have a strong mom who, um, you know, it was, it was, I'm really thankful, you know, that she walked me through that time. But, you know, it's, um people are always going to have something to say so right. that's kind of how i handled it you know it's like whether it was that issue or if it was another issue even if the other girl looked like me it would have been something else and so right. i think i think that that's the way i i looked at it and you know and that's that's it so um did you see any of your family in the cow family as far as like just always been on step with them did you see any similarities between the cow family and your actual personal family um <laughs> tisha always tried to like act like my mom so she could get on my nerves like she really studied my mom and how my mom would get on my nerves and then she would try to act like that, like in the scenes. And so it would be, it would be really, really funny. Uh, I, I really enjoyed being on My Wife and Kids because it was a family show. Um, I didn't have that family dynamic in that way. Okay. And so it was like for those years, you know, we were really, we were you know, always together all the time. And, and even having scenes with Damon and he was, you know, like, just, you know, these really sweet, you know, moments between a, a daughter and father were just really great. And, and honestly, Damon treated me like I was his, one of his daughters okay. um, when we were on set. So it was a really, it was a really great family dynamic because all the Wayans always have their family uh, working on set. So it was, it was just really, it was a really great experience. Okay. Did they give you any direction on how Claire should act? Or was all the, her personality, her dixiness, which I thought her being dixie made her really funny. But was that just your personal spin on the character? Or did they give you an idea of how she should act? Claire was supposed to be a really cool cheerleader. And I mean, I'm, I'm still pretty goofy and silly. But <laughs> Then I was very clumsy. So how Claire became like falling downstairs and all that <laughs> stuff is because like the writers like Damon and everyone would be sitting around writing and I would come down from school ready to rehearse and I would just fall like trip over nothing. And they <laughs> thought it was so funny. Like they would just laugh and then I laughed it off because I, I really, I just don't take myself that serious. So I just thought like whatever, you know? And so it was just funny because then they started writing it into the character. Claire falls down the stairs, Claire trips over things, you know? <laughs> and so, um, so that's really how, that's really how that, you know? Okay. It, it really made Claire very likable and funny. So I mean, I enjoyed your character. Um, so do you keep in contact with any of this, the cast currently or everybody kind of just, you know, on their own, doing their yeah, own thing? Well, you still keep in contact? I, I haven't talked to George in a while, but yeah, I talked to Parker, um, who was my younger sister, who is a woman now, a beautiful woman. Um, and uh, Tisha, I talk to regularly. Damon, um, I talk to. So I think... Um, you know, it, it, it was just like a really special time, a really special mm -hmm. cast. And I'm really thankful to still keep in touch with everyone. Okay. Um, so you also were very um, recognized and you got served, um, <laughs> which I still think is a classic still to this day. Um, so how was it being a part of a movie that just meant so much to the culture? Um, I mean, wow, thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I I mean I think that it's really amazing. I I when we were shooting the movie, you know, I don't think we had any idea what the impact would be, you know, till now. We we just were really having fun and doing what we love to do and we were all friends and 
Um, it was just uh, like, I mean, to now, you know, it's on Netflix and my daughter yeah. just watched it for the first just time. Just watched it the other day. Bold enough. Yeah. <laughs> they, like, you know, understand it. And so it's just really cool to watch it have the, the impact it does, you know, to be relevant now and to be one of the first dance movies, really. I, um, right. And I was watching, I was like, man, they were so good. The dancing yes. was so, so good. So it's awesome. Was there um, ever any talks of a sequel or part two to that movie? I would love that. I, I mean, I think it's the right story. You know, I don't uh -huh. know what the story would be for that, but I think if the right story came about, I think that would be really good. Okay. Um, so just, just from following you and doing a lot of reading, I did gather that your faith is something that's important um, to you. Um, so I do want to know, have you ever turned down any roles in your career that might have compromised your faith or your image as a mother? Yes, I definitely have, have you know, turned down, you know, opportunities because of my faith and and just the example that I want to set for my daughter, I think everyone has their own conviction. So I don't think, you know, I'm not judgmental in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I but I think that, you know, I want to do things that um, make sense for myself and, and, and the life that I'm trying to live, you know, and, and what I'm trying to teach my daughter. So, so yes, I have. Um, okay. Which has been hard sometimes. <laughs> But, but, you know, I think you have to do things that make sense for you and Absolutely. For yourself, you know, because at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, it, it's you, you know, right. so you have to live with yourself. So I do know you took a, a quite a bit of a break um, from the acting scene. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about why you decided to take that long break and what was it that you were doing during that time? Um, I decided to take a break because I, I think that a lot of times people are afraid to take a break. I, I got to a place where I really felt like I needed to take time out for me. Um, okay. you know, like I, I think I shared a little bit, but I really went on this journey of really trying to figure out why I didn't love myself and I was struggling with depression and just different things and and I had gone through a divorce and so I really wanted to you know take time out and deal with you know myself so that I could be whole and I could be you know figure out why um I felt the way that I did so mm -hmm. I think that's important for everyone you know mental health and emotional health and you know spiritual health is is just as important as you know physical health and so right. If you're not okay, then no one else is going to be okay either. You know, right. like you can't give away something that you don't have. And, and so I wanted to make sure that I was, I was good. So, right. so, um, so yeah, I went on a self, um, I went on a journey to, to loving myself and, and just really healing from hurts and traumas and things that I had been through in my life. And I'm really thankful because today I have so much peace and so much just inner inner peace and joy. And it's not dependent on circumstances. Like even now, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, it's not dependent on if the world is open, if it's not open, if, you know, I, I really able to um, deal with life in such a different way than um, I was before. And so I'm really, um, I'm really happy about that. That's great. It's really good that you can be very transparent um, because, of course, when we look at you, we see a very beautiful person and it's very easy to get pretty much lost in that. You know, you see success, you see beauty and you absolutely feel like, oh, you know, everything that she's doing, her life is perfect. So it's very great that you're being very transparent for those who are watching, um, those who may also have dealt with depression and things like that. So. I appreciate you for um, sharing that with us, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, so just to shift the, the mood a little bit, um, what do you do to get in the Christmas spirit? What do I do to get in the Christmas spirit? Well, I love baking. That is like having the house smell like cookies, brownies, anything sweet is amazing. Mm. That's like, like a 
that has to happen during the holidays. Uh, having Christmas music on, decorating, having Christmas movies playing in the background, like the classics or, you know, all of those things, you know, really, you know, just creating a, an atmosphere. And so I think this year doing all of that is, you know, and, and more is super important because it, you know, it was starting not to feel like Christmas. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, it's been tough. It's been yeah. tough during, during COVID. So, you know, speaking of the Christmas spirit, you know, you started not one, not two, but three Christmas movies. So obviously you've been very busy. Um, we're definitely going to get into that, but I want to play a little game. Are you okay. okay with games? All right. Um, yes. I want to play. <laughs> I want to play Would You Rather, but it's okay. going to be a Christmas edition. Okay. Okay. So some okay. some of the options might be a little left field, but I thought they were pretty funny. So we're going to ask you a few of these, and if you guys in the comments want to play along, that's fine as well. Okay. Um. So Jennifer, would you rather sing Jingle Bells every time you enter a room for a week? Or wear a Santa Claus outfit for a week to work. I'm like, wait, what? Both of those options. Maybe the jingle bells. Oh, yeah. The options may not be completely yeah. great, but that's what okay. makes it fun. Yes. Yeah, I'd rather <laughs> sing the jingle bells. Yes. Okay. So would you rather make presents for your family instead of buying them? Or would you rather make Christmas tree ornaments instead of buying them? Um, I think that I'd rather make Christmas tree ornaments um, because I actually really like doing crafts and stuff. So that would be fun. Okay. So would you rather not celebrate Christmas or not celebrate your birthday? Hey, that is <laughs> not fair. Um, I would, ah, oh, that's, I would rather not celebrate Christmas. Hey, it's fair. Look, I'm with you. I would have chose the same thing. I wouldn't look. I, I wouldn't celebrate my birthday. Not celebrate my birthday, man. No. <laughs> okay. Um, would you rather um have Frosty the Snowman as your best friend or Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. So I think he's pretty cool too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, would you rather give gifts or receive gifts? I would rather give gifts. I would like to see people happy. So that's like my favorite, getting a gift and surprising them and then seeing their faces. It's really cool. Well, aren't you sweet? <laughs> so would you rather eat cereal with eggnog or eat a candy cane sandwich? <laughs> Who came up with these? Oh my I gosh, <laughs> a candy cane sandwich. Um, okay. Uh, I guess a candy cane sandwich. So you have a candy cane sandwich over eggnog with cereal? Yeah, well, because I don't like dairy. Oh, okay. Mm -mm. Well, that's the whole fun of Would You Rather. Oh. <laughs> So, would you rather have a nose that glows like Rudolph or ears that are pointy like an elf? Uh, ears that are pointy like an elf so I can just hide them with my hair. Oh, see? That's pretty smart. Solutions. <laughs> so, would you rather visit Bethlehem or the North Pole? <laughs> Bethlehem. Sure. Yeah, I kind of, I, I figured that you, that you would say that. Yeah. Um, so would you rather go Christmas caroling or watch Christmas movies? Um, I can't sing, so I don't think anyone would like to hear me caroling. <laughs> um, but I mean, that could be fun, but, um, maybe watching Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And last one, would you rather eat fruitcake for two weeks, nothing but fruitcake or eat candy canes for two weeks nothing else but candy canes i think i both would make me horribly sick but maybe just the candy canes okay all right so thanks for participating in my would you rather my christmas edition <laughs> it was very interesting loved it all right so jennifer we're going to talk about your um your three mo movies you know okay. you have 
got the name of Queen of Christmas, um, which has been really exciting. Um, I haven't had a chance to check them out just yet, but I just got BET Plus. So I will be checking them out. Um, so I do know you had uh, The Business of Christmas, which premiered just last, uh, I think it was Wednesday the 9th. Mm -hmm. um, and both of your movies, um, The Christmas Kiss. You got to help me. Is it The Bow of Holly? Is that how you say Bows it? Bows of Holly. Bows of Holly. Okay, both premiering on Saturday the 12th. One on uh, The Christmas Kiss is on BET Plus, um, for yes. those who do not know. And the Bows of Holly is on Iowan television, right? Iowan television, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I do want to know, when did you film all three of these movies? I filmed them during the pandemic, actually. I mean, uh, you know, it was, uh, it's a very interesting process. You know, they, they test you before you get the role and then you test every other day. And if, you know, someone comes up positive, they'll shut down the production. But wow. you know, thankfully we didn't get shut down or anything. So um, I think we were just all really blessed and thankful to, to, you know, be working during such a crazy time. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, being that um, none of these were filmed during the holiday, was it hard to get in like the Christmas spirit at all? Um, I don't think it was hard to get in the Christmas spirit. It was just very hot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it was very hot to film, uh, you know, you're in, like, sweaters and, you know, and it's, like, summertime. So, right. you know, but but other than that, no, I think we were, you know, it was it was nice to be able to know you we were filming something that was going to be positive and, and put a smile on people's faces during the holidays. You know, especially, you know, during such a, you know, crazy time. So, um, so it was fun. Um, so can you just tell us really quick, um, what are the three movies about? Just to give the viewers kind of a synopsis of what to expect so they can go check them out as soon as okay. it's over. Yes. So let us know what they're about. Okay, so The Business of Christmas is about a family who has a family business. And um, the parents call all of the adult kids and they um he um they all the kids are busy you know as you know adults get busy with their lives and um they can't come home for the holidays and then the uh there ends up being a, a situation with the parents um a health scare and then they have to go home they're forced to go home and deal with that so i okay. really like the message of that movie because i feel like it's really relatable to today you mm -hmm. know and not waiting until something bad happens to you know tell the people that you love you know that you love them or spending time with them and and just you know what the priorities are in life and then there's christmas kiss uh which is about a quirky assistant and she is, um, she ends up uh, having a makeover and then okay. she kisses her, her boss's boyfriend. She doesn't know it, but it's her boss's boyfriend in the elevator. And um, then she goes to work next day looking, you know, how she normally looks and he doesn't even recognize her. Um, and so it's just a, it's a really cool movie about love and it's, it's a, it's a, it's really cute. And so those two are on BT plus and then Bows of Holly is on Ion television. It's going to air again on Christmas Eve. And that is about Holly, who is like a type A personality. She owns a greeting card store and she has like a five year plan. She's like a super planner. <laughs> So she decides that it is time to get married. She's going to propose to her boyfriend, plan a, um, a Christmas vacation for them, you know, for their engagement. And she doesn't take into consideration that he could possibly say no, which he does. And she's forced to go on the vacation, you know, without him. And it ends up being the best thing that could have um, ha happened to her. So, um, so yeah, so they're all three different. They all just three happen to be set at Christmas, but they're just very different movies. So, okay. Yeah. All of those movies sound very entertaining. I will check them all out. Um, so being that you said that the movies are very different, did you find any similarities between any of your characters? Uh, yes. So uh, Holly uh, I would say we are 
similar in the sense that yes i i like to think about i'm like an overthinker so mm -hmm. i like to think about everything and i think this year has you know i try to plan things and you know nothing <laughs> You know, nothing that I thought was going to happen this year necessarily happened, but a lot of good things did happen. And so um, I think uh, I'm most, I think I'm most like her and, and finding out like, you know, just being more open to being spontaneous and, and just kind of going with the flow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So without spoiling anything for the viewers, um, is there any valuable lessons that you can say any of your characters learned um, in the film? Is there yeah, any valuable I, lessons that they learned? Yeah, I think uh, Holly just learning to, you know, uh, go along with the flow more in life and being more open to that, you know. Um, I, I think in the business of Christmas, you know, really not taking the people in your life for granted you know, and really, um, you know, not being so busy with, you know, work accomplishments or things like that to where you, you miss out on what's really important, you know, because we, okay. you know, life, life is not promised, right? Absolutely, We've right. Here. So it's really important for us to, to be, you know, present with our loved ones every day, you know? Right. So was there a scene that you that was a favorite of yours to shoot? You know, I know that you worked on three different sets, um, but were any of them like just completely enjoyable for you to set? Um, to, I'm sorry, to shoot? I All of them. I, all of them? I, I think every opportunity that I'm given to do what I love to do is a blessing and I enjoy it. Um, I, I feel very blessed that I've been able to have a career and, you know, I mean, you know, not many people can say that they really do what they love to do for a living. So, okay. so, so yeah, they were all really, really fun. So, um, after viewing the movie, which I assume you've watched all three already, um, how did you feel, you know, after seeing them? Like, did you watch it as a consumer or did you watch it as a professional? Did you critique yourself? How did you feel after watching your yourself in these three films? I don't like watching myself. Okay. So it's very awkward and I like cringe the whole time. Um, but I try to watch it. I look away a lot. Um... And that's really it. I watched them with my daughter. And so that was that was really the extent of that. <laughs> I really, I don't know. I, just, I don't like watching myself. It's like nails on a chalkboard. It's very weird because you're like looking at it like, oh my God, why did I look like that? Why did I turn right. like that? But, you know, and it's not about that. So, yeah. I don't so like does it. Isabella ever like critique you? Does she give you like little pointers or things you could have did better or anything oh like that? Oh my gosh. So she, she, um, on one on the Bose of Holly at the end, it was so funny. I, I, well, I don't want to give it away, but I mean, it, it in the movie I kiss, I, I kiss both of my boyfriends, right? So she's like, "Ew, I need holy <laughs> water." Oh my god! And I just didn't expect her to act like that, and it was so funny to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It was very funny. She's so cute. She's really adorable. Um, so you. what is one thing that you want viewers to take away from watching all three of these fun holiday films? Like, what is that one thing that you just want them to feel? I just, I, I hope that people smile. I hope it brings okay. people joy and that they, you know, just, just enjoy for an hour, an hour and a half, you know, not think about everything else that's going on. Okay, so yeah. before we open the floor for a few of the comments that we have, I do want to know what is next for you in 2021? I do know you have your podcast and your books coming up. Is there anything else that we can expect? Or are you just simply focusing on building your brand with your podcast, Be Free? Yeah, I, I'm really focused on that. I feel like that's really my purpose work. And I'm really excited to to really concentrate on that this next year. 
Okay. Um, Jennifer, do you have a few moments? Um, we have just a few comments from the fans that they want to ask you a few yes. questions. Do you, okay. I probably have like one or two because honestly, my phone okay. is dying. Okay. So, um, before it dies. Um, All right. Yeah, yeah. we're going to we're gonna do this really quick. I'm going to pick a really good one. Some of these we might have with me i have jennifer she's coming back uh we were live we had a great interview her phone died unfortunately but that's why we have chargers uh she will be back in just a minute all right hi beautiful oh my goodness i am so sorry my <laughs> phone died i was like mid question i was, I was like i'm gonna get her like where was your charger missy <laughs> So my daughter has my charger, so now I'm in my car because she needs it for school. So it's just oh. you know, been a whole situation for today. Okay. You know, I, I, we're gonna we're gonna let you pass because you're a wonderful mom. Your mom duties, your your babies using your charger for school. I mean, that's a that's a that's a great reason though. So yeah, now we I can mean, say. Your phone died during your interview with T with T because your baby was in school. I'll make sure I add that to the article. <laughs> so I, I am um, so sorry. It was literally as I was saying it, I was like, yes, one question before my phone dies, click. I was like, oh my blue. gosh. I was like, wait, because I did have one question and I forgot. I honestly forgot. Uh, oh, um, I don't know who it was who asked, but they did want to know, um, were there any talks of a My Wife and Kids reboot? Oh, um, I mean, I would totally be open to that if that was if that was to happen. I'll never say never. So, yeah, I, I mean, think it would be great, you know, to see how life is for Claire and Junior and um, yeah, yeah, it would it would be great, Jennifer. You have been such a joy to talk with. Um, Aww, a lot of people so were much. very excited to hear from you. Um, you're very beautiful, and I can't wait to hear your podcast because I also do a podcast. Uh, so I'm, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to hear what you have to say. I subscribe to your YouTube. I'm going to check out your movies. Um, for the viewers who you. are just watching, uh, please make sure you tune in to Jennifer's. Uh, she has three Christmas movies. Um, they two of them will be on BT Plus. Uh, they are the Business of Christmas and the Christmas Kiss. They're both on BT Plus now. Um, the Bows of Holly, it already premiered, but it will be re airing on Christmas Eve, correct, Jennifer? Yes, mm -hmm. okay, Christmas Eve on ION television. So, guys, make sure you check it out. Hi, my name is Jennifer Freeman, and I'm having tea with Tia. <laughs> Thank you so much, beautiful. Um, I wish Thank you the best you. on your success. I cannot wait for 2021 for you, and thank you I hope so you much. Have a great I had so much fun talking to you and I'm just really geeked because I am such a my wife and kids Aww. fan so I was really excited to talk with you so Aww. it's it's Thank been you great. So much. great all right have good. a great one yes. all right you too thanks bye all right bye now bye, -bye.